Hi and welcome to Programming Percy. Today we will be looking at how we can add an SSO login in front of our Cloudflare applications. If you're not familiar with Cloudflare tunnels, I do recommend that you watch my other video or read my article about it because this video will expect that you know what an access tunnel is because this video will expect that you know what an access tunnel is and that you have a Cloudflare Zero Trust account with a tunnel up and running. So I recommend that video first if you haven't done it. In this video we will be looking at how we can add SSO in front of the applications. So what we have so far is an API running on my Raspberry Pi which is exposed through my domain. Maybe I don't want everybody to be able to visit this website or maybe I want to protect some certain path such as slash admin or anything and we can do that by adding SSO login screen in front of our applications which can really come in handy and to begin doing that to begin protecting our resources so you need the zero trust up and running you need a tunnel up and running exposing some kind of service hopefully you have that by now otherwise again my previous video will show you how to do that once you have that go into settings and there's a tab here called authentication there's a login methods and we want to add login methods we want to add new methods that we can use to log in and as you can see there's a bunch of identity providers which are supported in this video i will show you how to add github most of them are and work the same way what's nice is if you press on one of them such as github it will actually give you a detailed instruction on how to set it up and register a application now this one is really nice i'm just going to go ahead and jump to github and I will showcase GitHub for you guys, but you can do this for whatever identity provider that you have. So if you visit GitHub, you can go inside up here and go down to the settings. Then scroll down to the developer settings tab. You should see a setting called OAuth applications. Currently, I have no applications, so let's add a application. Basically, what we're doing is that we're telling GitHub that there's a website at a given URL which will send requests and we want to allow them to authenticate using these methods. So inside here, we need to apply a application name. This can be whatever. It should be something that you understand what it is. I'm going to call mine test API. The homepage URL is going to be the URL to your Cloudflare Tunnel Zero team. You can find the team by going to Cloudflare. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go to Settings. Go to the General tab. If you're uncertain, you can find your team name here. And this is actually the URL that we will need. The team name followed by .cloudflareaccess.com. So go ahead and copy that. I'm just going to quickly go back to adding GitHub. Navigate back to GitHub paste in that URL because we need it. Let's prefix it with HTTPS. It's going to be HTTPS programming proxy cloudflare access.com. It looks good. And some a demo application. And then there's the callback URL. The callback URL is going to be the same thing as your homepage URL, but Cloudflare actually hosts a callback URL to handle SSO for you. So we need to append a few values to the path. And it's going to be cdn-cgi slash access slash callback. You can find these URLs if you look in the detailed instructions on how to use it. You can actually find the URLs right here. It also tells you to replace the team name such as what we did. Whatever identity provider you choose, these instructions will be there and it should be pretty basic to follow. So let's go ahead. Let's register that application. You see a client ID here. This is important. You need to copy the client ID. It's going to go inside app ID. That's the ID for the GitHub application. Let's jump back to GitHub. We need a client secret. And you see there's no client secrets right now. So press generate new client secrets. And I will need to authenticate for that to work. Now, once you have authenticated, you should see a secret being shown here. Don't share your secret. I'm sharing mine right now but 
by the time you're watching this, I will have deleted this application. So copy that, go to the Cloudflare again, and at this place, we're going to paste in the secret. You should be presented with a URL. Now, this URL, you can either click Finish Setup, or you can copy and paste this URL if you're using a headless device. I'm, I'm on my main computer right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click Finish Setup. It will ask you to authorize the Cloudflare application to access your GitHub application, and I'm just gonna go ahead and authorize it. Success, you have added an identity provider. That's basically it. So let's go ahead and look at my API again. I'm hosting my API on a URL, which is test API, Percy Balmer slash work. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that for now. We will need that URL soon. To begin adding, to begin adding protection to a tunnel, we actually need to set up something called a application inside of the zero trust platform if you go to the access tabs you can see we have a tunnel we've been working with tunnels and tunnels is the access layer we can go up here and press applications applications are basically these access policies that you can apply to your uh, endpoints that are being hosted we can use these access policies to determine who can access the resources that we are serving. We're gonna look more at the rules with that we can apply very soon. Let's go ahead, let's press add application. There's a bunch of different things that you can add. We're doing it for a self-hosted application. So just go ahead and select self-hosted. The application name in this field, you can put whatever you want. It should be something so you understand what it is. I'm just gonna call mine test API again. The session duration is how long their token will be remembered once they have logged in. Now this is important. It's going to ask you the domain to apply access rules. And this has to match, this has to match the URL that you're hosting your service on. If these things doesn't ma match, the access lists won't be applied to your tunnel. So my API is hosted on test API as a subdomain, followed by percybalmer.work. I have added an application rule to this domain. Now we can scroll down. And you can see here that it asks you if you want to use a some kind of logo and if you want to show it in the application launcher. We haven't covered the application launcher because we don't have an application yet. We're creating one now. But once you create more applications, you can have this nice little card view showing all your applications if you visit the URL uh, which is your team's name, which is programming Percy for me dot cloudflareaccess.com. So if you go to your team name dot cloudflareaccess.com, you will see this little splash screen. Now I haven't at I haven't enabled the app launcher, so I'm not seeing anything. That's what they are asking for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enable it if I want to use the app launcher. It's pretty nice. But then here comes the fun part. So identity providers. Now you should see GitHub appearing if you have added it, or if you added something else, you should see uh, Google, for instance, appear here. Select the identity providers that you want to support to log in on the domain. I'm gonna go ahead, scroll back to the top and select next. At this place, we can start defining the rules and the rules here are access rules, so, or policies. So who are allowed to access this um, domain? Now, in my case, I'm going to create a policy rule called API users. And I'm going to allow, you don't have to allow, you can also block if you want to block certain, if you want to bypass or have a service auth. Now, the session duration, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it to the same as the application, which we set to 24 hours before. This is the name of the policy and this is the action if it should allow or block. And as you see here, it tells us that we can actually create groups. If we have these common policies that we reuse across many applications, for instance, uh, maybe I have a admin rule which allows all the admins, such as my, my, my own email, for instance, I want to be able to be an admin. I can add that as a access group, which I can then reuse uh, across these policies. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and see here that we can add rules here. So if we go into the selector, the selector is what value it will use. As you can see, we can use emails, IP ranges, countries, and a lot of different, different things. GitHub organization. I want to have a rule depending on the email. I'm only going to allow, I'm actually going to set the selector to Sweden, maybe. I only want to allow 
logins from Sweden. So I also only want to allow a certain email, which is this is wrong email. I'm ac actually putting in the wrong email here to show you what happens when I try to log in with a wrong email. So enter the correct email here and it should allow that email. If I log in with another email, I should be blocked. So I'm going to test this policy very soon. So let's go ahead. You can set a bunch of other stuff uh, if they want justifications, if you have like this ultra high security, if they're going to log into the admin page, they need to apply a reason why they are logging in. I don't want anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead. If I'm from Sweden, if I have this email, I will be allowed. Otherwise, I will be blocked. So it's really nice. You can have all these things set up, IPs, uh, emails, um, all these rules of who should be able to access. Another nice thing is that we can also set up course settings, which can become important if you have this web application, for instance, running. You need to add a, maybe if you if it should add the get parameter, for instance, etc. I'm just gonna leave this as the default. I won't cover course in this video. That would be a whole video by itself. We can also have cookie settings. I mean, if you should have a strict setting for the same site and HTTP only, for instance, Again, I'm just going to leave them empty for now. We're not doing that here. There's a great explanation in the Cloudflare documentations as what setting will have what effect. So once we have done this, let's go ahead and add the application. And the application was successfully added. We can see a little bit of information on the here. We can see that we have one policy assigned right now. You can have multiple policies, of course. If I go back to my URL now and I'm going to refresh, and I'm actually going to be met with this login screen. So it's telling me, do you want to log in to this website? And I do. I'm going to go ahead and authenticate with GitHub. Now remember, I have the wrong email. So I should get an error, right? I do not have access to um, enter this website. This is great. So our rule is working now. I kind of want to get into my website, so I'm going to go ahead go into the policy, click on edit. And as you can see, we can modify this, we can remove, we can add multiple. I'm just going to go ahead and add myself so that I, I can access my own uh, website. So I'm going to change the email, save the policy. I'm going to go back. I'm going to re-authenticate and this time, voila, working. As a summary, we can add access policies as something called applications to protect our self-hosted services and adding them is really easy and very smooth. The UI to do it is very simplistic and it feels easy even for a beginner to get started. You also get a bunch of metrics in the analytics view. So if I go to the analytics right now, I will see two failed login attempts. I tried this before, so uh, naturally I have two failed attempts. So it adds a little bit uh, of that, those metrics as well. If you apply this and you have uh, a service which also needs authentication, it's going to be a double authentication, which kind of sucks. But if you have control over that application, you can add the JVT token that comes from Cloudflare. Uh, there's a great explanation in the documentation. There's a few example snippets for different languages how you can extract the Cloudflare JVT and verify it if you want to use that as your main authentication token. And yeah, also if you go into settings and we go into general and there's a login page where you can access the login page, which look like this. You can see the preview here and you can actually modify this. You can change the background color. You can change the text and you can do a little bit of customization to make it look a little bit better. I really have to say I'm super impressed by these Cloudflare services so far. I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I do hope you had the chance to follow along. I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think? Have you used Cloudflare Zero Trust platform? What was your experience? Did it work out great for you? I find it super amazing so far. If you want to get started with self-hosting smaller applications, you can get by with a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to put a link in the description to a Amazon link, 
which is full disclosure a affiliate link so if you purchase from them they will sponsor me um, I'm using a Raspberry Pi myself and it's working great so far and I just love it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and I hope to see you guys more. Bye.